lost ones and welcome to Vorpal Tales, where you'll find many an awesome adventure and a myriad of terrifying tales. This will be one of those terrifying tales, set in the world of Changeling the Lost, published by Onyx Path Publishing for A Tale of Harrowed Bone. You may call me Ambrose, my pronouns are he or they, and I shall be your storyteller for you tonight. Warple Tales can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and all over the web at Warple Tales. If you like the stories we weave for you, please consider checking out and subscribing to our Patreon. If you want to interact with the weavers themselves, join our Discord. We wouldn't be able to enter these strange and twisted realms without our sponsors, QUEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code VORPALTALES for 10% off. Hitpoint Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VORPALTALES.com, click our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit our show. Gemhammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Decks of Wonder to Decks of Illusion to Dice. Here, too, you can use the discount code VORPALTALES for 10% off. If you've been enchanted by our glamour, the art which encompasses all things changeling, both the lost and the dreaming, was commissioned from the amazing Divida Libro, who can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and Redbubble. Now, my sweetlings, regale all our lucid dreamers out there with your name, but not your true name, of course, at what hollow they can find you, and what form you'll be taking this evening. Hi, I'm Kay, and you can I use your pronouns, and you can find me at puppylover12398 at Twitter or abounds in the usual Discord areas, Warple, uh, Gehenna Gaming, Caring Comfort, etc. And uh, tonight I will be playing Colin, our Beast Bearskin, Changeling. Hello. Mm. They call me Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And tonight I will be Young He, the Ogre Draconic of the Summer Court. And hello there. My name is Mary. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Oh Hello Mare. Uh, she, her pronouns. Tonight I will also be playing Sylvia Light, also she, her. Uh, your fairest pretzel grinder. Hello, uh, my name is Rachel. You can find me stolen fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. And tonight I will be playing the kithless cryptid hunter, uh, Eolanth. We are both she, her, and Eolanth is out of court. Thank you for sharing your titles and oaths with the forlorn souls out in the realms of mortals. For now, we venture into a bastion where someone dreams of the previous episode. Mayor, if you could. Absolutely. We open by introducing ourselves and our characters, and then switch to talking about our motley. We have established our motley as having a very familial vibe. As the Chronicles opens, our changelings have become aware of refugees more than normal, emerging from the hedge. Sylvia, our winter court businesswoman, gets a phone call. It's the free, it's the autumn queen, and it's a bit garbled but the one phrase that comes through is freehold emergency. Putting it on speakerphone, she says something about a true fay being at the freehold and wanting the autumn court to relinquish her crown. We've got to go. We flail about while preparing as no one is quite sure how to get ready to face down a true fay. Eventually, however, we end up at the freehold a speakeasy-like establishment run by an ogre named Bill. It's deathly quiet in the Freehold, despite the Freehold being packed. 
It's because there is a true fae at every single table. The other changelings are clearly terrified, though trying not to show it. Iolanth is trying hard to see if there are any fae she recognizes as her keeper. No face sparks any memory for her, but she does attract the attention of a different true fae. It is an owlish creature, which makes her feel utterly cold. She's terrified, but reluctant to show it, holds her ground and stares it down. It actually looks cuter the longer she stares at it. It eventually shrugs and looks away, giving Iolanth the justification she needs. Yang Jung Hee makes his way to the bar. Iolanth, knowing his summer court, slinks her way over to him in case a fight breaks out. Meanwhile, Sylvia seeks out the Autumn Queen. Using her kenning, she sees sunset sparkling from beneath the manager's doorway. The air hangs heavy with the scent of rotting pumpkins and freshly snuffed candles. She starts making her way slowly over to the office. Back at the bar, Young He realizes Bill has no idea that his new customers are true fae. He seems strangely okay with this. Iolanth tries to read his clarity and picks up that it's somehow a fake Bill. She's now worried for Sylvia and goes to keep an eye on her as she investigates whatever is in the office while Young He watches the door. In the office, the Autumn Queen, Deirdre, is staring down another true fae. It's dressed in spiderweb silk, dyed with impossible indigo, gray-skinned with a huge, dark eyes. It confronts our motley, seeming to believe we are planning to interfere with whatever plans it has. Sylvia launches into a long, inspiring speech, calling on the magic of her contracts to keep everyone in this room safe, at least for the evening. The true Fay has picked up on this and seems offended. Iolanth takes advantage of the distraction to read the true Fay with her own contract. What is this entity afraid of? Iolanth's vision narrows and she feels a wet, cold breeze down her neck. Looking to her left, she sees bone. They are brittle and hollow and broken. To her right, more bones, and she herself is covered in ash and dust. She remembers that dust is made up of dead skin cells, and there are piles and piles of dust here among the bones. Turning around, she sees a face slipping back into the shadows. It's crooked and yellow with rodent-like teeth and completely white eyes. That's when Iolanth loses consciousness. Sylvia and Young He see her collapse as the true Fae begins weeping black tears. Young He barrels into the room, a mouthful of beer and a lighter in hand, ready to do some violence. Sylvia tries to hold him back while Deirdre leaps over the desk and attacks the true Fae. Sylvia tries to pull her friend away from the true Fae, who is letting loose all of her fury against the true Fae. Sylvia desperately calms her down. After a moment, Sylvia does something, or Deirdre, does something very human. She grabs a tissue and hands it to the weeping true fae. Sylvia looks for a first aid kit to also help, and Young He uses it to treat Iolanthi. She sputters back awake, muttering something about bone and ash and wasteland. Sylvia tries to comfort the true fae. It seems you had a difficult time getting here. The Fae says yes and makes it clear that she will not be returning to Arcadia, ever, for any reason. Sylvia asks about the bones. There's something called the Harrower, which seems to be hunting the true Fae. It has scourged Arcadia and is now destroying the hedge. And it's only a matter of time before it comes to Earth. Deirdre looks at the rest of us, terrified. She whispers the name of another Motley member. What about her? asks Sylvia. 
Deirdre says she's gone into the hedge, not knowing the dangers. Well, shit. Gotta get her out now. Sylvia starts negotiating with the True Fae. If we can kill the Harrower, the gentry will return to Arcadia. Young He bursts out with, No, you are not welcome here. Leave. As Iolanth asks what hope they have of defeating a monster, which the United Gentry could not stand up to. The True Fae only smiles its needle tooth grin at Young He. It admits to Iolanthi that this is a hopeless deal. He him. Discussing what to do next, the true Fay insinuates our friend might already be, be be dead. That's enough for Young He, who marches to the clo closet door and opens a gate into the hedge. Before we step through, Deirdre suggests we might bring a few things with us. Iolanth knows cold iron is a possibility, along with learning every aspect of the Harrower's name. St. John's wort and yarrow are herbal remedies if they were collected properly. Iolanth asks if she can borrow some of these herbs from Deirdre. Young He asks for a cold iron knife and something to keep it contained in, along with a bottle of bourbon. Sylvia brings cream and butter with her, along with some sugar and honey. Poking her head out the door, she sees the true fae and other changelings have begun slightly to relax. Deirdre doesn't have any cold iron knives, but does offer a handkerchief wrapping uh, a handkerchief wrapped iron coffin collar. Let me try that one again. <laughs> Deirdre doesn't have any cold iron knife, but does offer a handkerchief wrapped iron coffin nail. Setting it on the desk, the true fae begins gagging like a cat with a per per particularly vicious hairball. Here's the night, friends. She follows up with an iron spearhead in a box and a mallet head in a pile of grocery bags. Young He is still feeling a little twitchy and he steps outside looking for any true fae who seems like they might be up for a duel. He sees a dryadic true fae and starts picking a fight. However, he notices a wound on its face and that bone is flaking away. Looking around, about half the gentry here are wounded, with their bones similarly damaged and wounded. He doesn't get a fight, but he does get the feeling of satisfaction of having gotten one over on the true fae. It is now time to enter the hedge. Excellent, thank you. You enter the hedge, and it is green, vibrant, like sparkling emeralds. Oh, geez, that's the wrong song. Good job, me. <laughs> Are we fighting already? We just got here. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> nah. Um, ah, so sorry. My list is kind of mixed up. That's weird. See if that's it. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, emeralds that have grown into vines, if you will. You step in, and what do you expect? Let's start with Rachel. What does Iolanth expect when she steps into the hedge? Uh, Iolanth is surprised to see everything as vibrant as it is. Uh, she was sort of expecting to see something decayed and damaged by whatever is hunting the true fae. And so, you know, this is um, an important conclusion because it indicates whatever this monster is it doesn't affect the environment just people and jung he what did you expect when walking into the hedge he 
Jung he usually expects some sort of goblin to come up out of nowhere to ask for a toll. So the fact that that hasn't happened yet puts a smile on Young He's face. Interesting. What if they were all dead? Sylvia, what did you expect when walking into the hedge? Um, I expected particularly after hearing what had happened to Arcadia perhaps Sylvia had expected it to be a little more eviscerated than it was at this point but walking in and seeing things mostly still in the natural green gives her a little bit of comfort and hoping that perhaps they could find their friend before they get to the part where it will be messed up. Ah, yes, your friend. Colin, when you walked through the hedge, what did you expect after what you had heard from the true Fae back at the speakeasy? I think Colin had expected nothing. He expected his senses to fail him, and he expected bleakness. It's a fair assessment. Now, looking at the hedge, it is a vast expanse of twisted briars, greenery, random trinkets, actually. Uh, pinned on the thorns or half buried in the ground. Some are slightly distracting and shiny. Some are strange, like bits of broken glass that has a face and it seems to be speaking words, but nothing comes out. Where do you even begin to look for your friend, Colin? This is a player question, because again, I am Jon Snow and I know nothing. Um, <laughs> is it dangerous to use changeling like powers and stuff in the hedge? Like, does that like set off like a radar alarm? Like, hello, here would be changelings or something. It does attract attention. However, uh, changelings are more adept at using hedge magic than the true Fae are. Okay. All right. Uh, would I would. I or anybody else in our party be able to use Kenning to try to like kind of like we did with Deirdre in the other scene? I would allow that, absolutely. So uh, Kenning. Do you have your PDF open, my friend? I have my PDF open. But I feel like if someone would have is there like a strength to Kenning? Like to the closeness of people within the party? Uh, Kenning. Kenning is a... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Keith. It might not be the best choice, mm -hmm. since Kenning usually is trying to find what is or isn't magical in an area, and the hedge is all magic. Okay. So it'd be it like trying be... to look for a light bulb in a lit room. It would be trying to find one needle in a stack of needles. Oh, gotcha. Great. Fun. <laughs> but with hedge spinning, there might be a better way to figure out which way to go. Okay. Yes, and if you have any hedge skills in your contracts or merits, those would definitely come in handy. Or if uh, you want to, you could even use investigation skills or <laughs> survival yeah. skills to try and physically track. But uh, Colin has an ability that allows him to cover his tracks. Would you have used that, Colin? 
I don't think so. He's not particularly hiding from anyone right now. Um, he's too busy trying to find. Okay. So that's a relief for you then, because uh, that, that ability erases any trace. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine it's, it's a good sense to you that it's not like he's running away from the Molly, because if he was, he would clearly hide his tracks. True, so he does want to be found. More like, not on his mind. Let's see here. Got my physical book, and I will go to fetch the thing for you, Mary, if you haven't found it already. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my go, go gadget control F. So. Page two hundred four. Your page two hundred four. Sorry. <laughs> right. If no one else has a plan. Uh, my plan was to use, he uh, use hedge spinning as a presence intimidation role of screaming at the hedge to show me where where he is and praying that I get enough successes to learn the location of a specific person, place, or thing that isn't concealed in the hedge. Uh, I, I do have a divination contract. Ooh. And so I will leave it up to you all. Do you want to do a combination of these things? Should one not work or all at the same time? Be like Young he would try to do his thing regardless of whatever anyone else is doing, just out of impulse. Gotta find them. Gotta find them. That's fair. So, uh, Ilanth, if you would like to use your divination skill, you can. And, uh, Key, go ahead and give me that roll. Uh, about that sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Iolanth just sort of lets her eyes unfocus and she studies the uh, whirling branches twisting around each other in the hedge and from this chaos uh, she gets three successes uh, which uh, the rules are for each success on the invocation roll, the player may ask the story one yes or no question about the current situation and receive true answers to all but one of them. One answer is always false, unless I only roll one success, but I roll three. All right, what is your question? I mean, I'm just going to be super cheesy. Uh is is Colin in front of us? Is Colin behind us? Is Colin to the side of us? Uh, the hedge will hear this and it begins to open a path diagonally to your left. Not ahead of or behind or to the left or to the right. That is your answer. Uh, you want the shrugs? I'm like, I think it's this way. However, Jung Hee also did a roll, and he was planning on doing something at the same time. So what? Young Hee practically kicks open the door, marches like five feet out, and just yells, "Where is he? Where is he?" as this contract is unfolding, so then the hedge opens up. Young He failed horribly, but attributes this to his sheer force of will. So Young He's uh, got some delusions of grandeur there. Yeah. But uh, also, a briar 
snakes up behind you in response to this screaming and just thwacks you right on the behind. Please take one point of bashing. One point of bashing and Yunky immediately turns around, shield in one hand, fist ready in the other to swing at whoever did that. Shouting, ah, we're surrounded. No. If you if you decide to actually look around, you can see some roots uplifting some dirt and it, it makes kind of a, a evil grin under the dirt. And he falls to his knees, pounds a fist onto the dirt next to it, and just goes, How dare you! No! You're safe this time. The next time you won't be so lucky. Gets up. Turns to the party, does one nod, turns to the path, and starts walking. All right. You are on your way to your friend Colin. And it seems like the hedge is unusually compliant for now. Colin, you are almost out of the hedge. You kind of remember where your keeper's place is, but there's no telling whether or not the hedge has decided to let you out there. Is there anything you'd like to use to make sure that you get there? Yes. So, uh, Colin has sort of stuck to their skills and their know-how, and he's realizing they're getting close, but he's not entirely sure exactly where, and so he would like to take a moment to rely on his trained observing abilities to make sure that he is in the right place here. This is the section that will lead him out. All right, and uh, how do you go about using that skill? So it involves uh, his perception. So essentially it's an advanced perception role. All right. Um... So go ahead and give me your perception plus wits. So perception is a mix, I think, of two stats. It's wits and... Oh, sorry. I was oh, reading pleasure. persuasion. Uh -huh. You're good. Um, um, yes. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, wits and composure. composure. And then I have a question on if my um, hedge sense or hedge wise might apply which one hedge sense is about navigating the hedge and hedge wise is about to ken even magically concealed hedge wises and hedge spinning i would suggest going with the first one the hedge okay. is not attempting to deceive however okay. awesome so that's going to give me a dice pool of seven Beautiful and uh, I also have nine agains. On this. Oh, beautiful. Um, I think so. We counted tens as twos. Yeah, two. Are we, are we counting so, tens as twos instead of rolling again? Yes. So okay. your nine again will also be that. Okay. Five successes. All right. You know exactly where you're going. You're Are you in your animal form or are you in your bipedal form? Uh so his he's not in any chrysalis activated animal forms, but I think uh he is not necessarily in his human form. Uh, his changeling form is is essentially like a dog boy like from an anime. He's got he looks, you know, like a young man, but He's got, you know, these claws at both hands and feet, and he's just like a little more sharply agile. There's some crinks in his body that will lead him to walk either quadrupedal or bipedal, depending on what would be best. He's got sort of uh, these 
you know, poofy ears at both of his heads that are very keen to sound, and a tail that almost seems slightly prehensile, and just the way it moves. Interesting. All right. If he were a breed of dog, what do you think he'd be? It would probably be something akin to like a a husky or a German shepherd. Okay. You're getting all these smells. Uh, This is going to sound strange, but you smell the sound of wind chimes. You can feel glamour just landing. No, wait, that's not glamour. It's dust. You make your way through the hedge, finally stumbling out of the briars. And there's pink sand. You walk across it. It's warm, but not hot. And as you're going along, the sand has sculpted itself into a grand palace, glittering in the light. It's actually nighttime here, and it is a full, beautiful moon with hints of purple and blue and pink. Does this look familiar to you? No. All right. Do you wish to go inside or continue on? Uh do my senses lead me to believe that my keeper, I mean former, former keeper, uh, is uh, inside this place. You better be careful. Mayor's eyeing you suspiciously now. (laughs) Uh, You do not smell anything living in this. You hear no footsteps. You hear no wing beats. You hear no breathing it is as silent as a tomb I skip over it if, if it is not where my former keeper is then I am not interested I have but one goal all right so you keep on I would like if you could roll your survival and your wits because this place is always changing this is Arcadia does this have anything to do with traps or tracking tracking yes traps no okay So I have investigation with a specialty of tracking. Would that work instead of survival? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, Four successes. Awesome. You remember... uh, the path, even though it is ever-changing. It's not a physical road. It's a road of energy. It is a road of... And I, I apologize, you remind me of your court again. Uh, I am spring. It is a road of thermal flower petals. And as you walk, you can feel them floating past your legs. You can feel a soft breeze 
This is a summer or a spring road, I apologize. And you catch a, a scent of cherry blossoms in the air, fresh and undying. And you close your eyes and let this path lead you. And it feels as though you've both been walking five steps simultaneously as you've been walking four miles. You feel yourself come to a stop as the path branches off and you open your eyes to see beautiful, beautiful peach trees growing up out of the ground and your eyes trail up the bark that is smooth and breathing. When your eyes get to the top, there are no leaves. There are blossoms, but they are curdled, black, and feathering off into a light dust. And if you look closely, you can see that from the blossoms, this rot, this utter decay is creeping down the branches and making its way towards the roots. This is the entrance to your keeper's land. It's ever changing, ever evolving. But now that you're here, you know exactly where you're going. What building, if it's a building, would you be looking for? Would it so, be a tree, hollow, or a hill, etc.? So it is in fact a a manicured lawn that sort of seems out of place amongst the idea of Arcadia. It is in such a level of order to which usually sort of this chaos of phantasmagoria exists inside Arcadia. There is order and there is precise nature. Like the, it almost looks as if someone would have cut these blades of glass with, grass with a ruler against them to make sure that they are perfectly all the same. And atop this, there is then, as you go further, a fine layer of snow, but it's not cold. It's just the peaks of it. And then astride that is what looks like the most gorgeous and lavish sort of hunter's lodge. Like one would see on the, the capstone scales of like the cat scales or in Vale in Colorado, that just opulence and luxury in dark wood. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Is it normally filled with a lot of people and parties being spring, or is it filled with raucous, debaucherous? Uh, adult rated scenarios or is it filled with delicate tea parties with oh, nothing, nothing delicate <laughs> uh, it is usually raucous and R rated but that is, that is kept to uh, certain rooms uh, it is harsh raucous R rated you know extravagance of the fruitfulness of a hunt and a bacchanal scent of achievement but there is also a level of, of this grandeur this grandizing of mounted trophies on the walls and keen showings of ownership and triumph against the wild within one's control interesting And much to your dismay, there's not a thing going on. There's no party, there's no celebration, there's no clattering of 
glassware in uproarious cheers. There's a haze in the air. A kind of grayish brown mist. Not along the ground, but weighted above the head. You make your way to this dwelling for your keeper. Is there anything that you would like to do to ensure that you find him or make sure that this area is safe? Yeah, um, I think I'd like to make use of my acute senses as well as the fact that I am a trained observer. I think both of those things are sort of fiddling together for this. All right. So, trained observer, give me that uh, wits and composure. So, it's a composure roll, and as acute senses, I get to actually apply my weird dice as a bonus dice to my perception rolls and to identify. Oh, all right. Go for it. Add those in there. Seven successes. Perfection. You do hear some tiny skittering noises. They sound like nails on stone. Kind of a... I think instinct almost takes over. As he hears such a noise in uh, in his former keeper's home, no less, and just immediately uh, runs to it, for it, and to capture it. It is in your keeper's room. Oh no, private quarters, no less. Do you choose to barge in there or kind of go stealthy? A uh, barge. <laughs> You bust in your previous keeper's room, and you see bone mice. They're these little hairless, big bug-eyed, tiny rodents that eat bone. And they are gnawing on a full skeleton laying in the bed. The marrow is completely gone. There is no flesh. Uh, I look upon the hand for the telltale sign. There's nothing there. Someone was in your keeper's bed. Oh, so it's not him. Cool. So, so assured. Much better. I think, yeah, there's like this momentary stricken panic uh, across Colin's face. Uh, their, you know, striking looks marred by by absolute fear before it sort of completely flickers away the fact that this is some other gentry. And belief sort of washes over him. It was, in fact, some other gentry. Your keeper's still missing. I am no longer caring about this uh, and instead I am going to keep looking and see if there's there's somewhere else or something else here well, while you look I'm going to go back to our friends in the hedge your motley mates you're all traveling along this strangely compliant path through the hedge with 
Iolanth being successful in her divination, it is the right way. I would like one of you to roll perception with some composure. Or all of you, actually, sorry. Okay. Only one of us can see. Only <laughs> one of you has the eyes. The rest of us are blind. That is five successes. Yeah, Beautiful. one success. He rolls. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been cursed somewhere along the line. Uh, I don't I know when. Two successes. Uh, you have more than that, actually. You do, right? Oh, three. Sorry, three. because ten's double. Right. You're all. And. Key, you you actually your your character knows this as well. You're being followed by something slipping in and out of the briars. You only hear it through me. And Sylvia, you caught a flash of green skin. Iolanth, you heard it, saw the green skin, and you know where it's hiding right now. Okay. Um, so, uh, Iolanth from her uh, satchel uh, will pull out a strip of cloth and blindfold herself uh, because I would like to use the Huntsman Clarion contract. Uh, which would give me information on what kind of creature it is. Um, so the changeling automatically knows whenever a true fae, huntsman, another kind of Arcadian denizen, or her own fetch is within a number of miles equal to her weird, but not where it is. But I know where it is, so I'm just trying to find out what it is. All right, uh, go ahead and roll your wits plus empathy plus weird. Okay. Wits plus da 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 empathy plus no weird. Excellent. Two successes. It's a hobgoblin. Okay. Uh, and so still blindfolded, Eolanth will point like there's a hobgoblin over there and then take the blindfold off. Jung he turns, does some boxing moves he saw in Rocky one time, and just goes, <laughs> where? As he activates Vigilant of Ares to predict ambushes and get an initiative bonus. Nice. It is not trying to, well, technically it's trying to ambush you, I guess. It smells the cream and butter in the squeaky treasure chest. It sounds like someone's trying to sell me something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is trying to sneak into the treasure chest, which so far has been unsuccessful. Uh, but if you're, it, since you're able to see it, it obviously has no idea that you can, any of you. And it is trying to figure out how to reach into the squeaky treasure chest to get out this tasty, tasty stuff. It is holding still. It's got little, it's got raptor hands right now. It is green, scaly, bumpy skin with big, giant ears that are way too big for its head. It looks kind of like a chihuahua if they were bipedal and had a short snout. <laughs> Except it's, it's got very large nostrils. It's clear that this hobgoblin's trying to steal from us. Mm -hmm. Like it's doing that whole like tiptoe thing. Yes, precisely. Yeah. All right. Zhang He is getting ready to challenge it to a duel. Uh, if anyone else would like to step in, uh, Sylvia feel free to do so. Sylvia is going to put a hand on Zhang He's shoulder and just go, one minute, give it a chance. Hello. I don't know. This is players not knowing. Can they talk? Yeah. Some of it. 
Yeah, most of them. I didn't know if they could talk if this is oh, it's all good. to a cobalt or something. I was like, okay. All right, it is, um, hello. It seems we have something you want. Excuse me. I was doing my best to hide. I, I can see that. You've got to try harder. Keep practicing. Um, I have a question for you, though. I know you've probably seen a lot of people weaving through the hedge. Oh. Did you see anyone go... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, they leave. They... Goodbye. Did you... Did... Yes. Did you see someone come in, like, hello? Oh, yes. I saw hello. You saw hello. Good. Good. This is good. And I would pinch off a tiny bit of, like, I guess I got, like, cheese. Like, I've just got dairy products in there. And I'm just like, good. Here. I have a few more questions. And I have more in here. It um, opens its mouth really wide to take this this cheese. Just like, it's, it's drop it, it just folds open like a hinge. Oh, you've it's got little tiny piranha teeth drops the little chunk of cheese into the open chasm that is its mouth. <laughs> Very good. Um, so, the hedge seems to be taking us this way. Did the hello come this way too? Oh. Well, yes, the hello came this way. The hello has stayed fluff fears and the hello has the fluffy tail and the hello it does a scary deed. Mm-hmm. That sounds very much like Colin. Looking to Iolanth and, and Young He. Um I'm looking to them is like, uh, do you have any other questions for uh our friend here? Anything you want to know? Other than fighting it? Young He like put his finger up, puts his finger down. <laughs> Other than fighting it, kind of makes a snap with its with its jaw when you put your finger up, Jung Hee. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That might actually be entertaining. Wait a second. It, it makes kind of like a, a if you've ever heard an alligator shut their mouth, the little snap. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Um, you you are uh, hello, but goodbye that way. Yes. Um, we are going towards the hello. We are looking for our hello. Team, and it holds its hands up expectantly. Will you show me where the hello is? Mm. It looks at its hand. His little, three little fingers, mm -hmm. and it goes, oh, and it waves. Good cookie. That was very adorable. <laughs> and takes and pours like a little bit of cream into its, like unscrews the cap on the carton of cream, and shrugs at Island. It's really cute, and it did give us a little bit of a chance. Mm -hmm pours just like like a thimbleful into its little hands. It just takes it and goes and launches the cream at its open mouth. It gargles the cream and then it swallows it. It's so cute. I'm dying. Um Will you like you I have uh you like to buy uh stinks. What kind of things, little friend? Uh, also, just player knowledge, is this a bad idea? Because I don't know, like, what you're Yes and no. It's a goblin. But it's a goblin. I mean, it's probably got a lot of cool things, but it will all come with a price. This one seems as if it's not got too much upstairs to uh, trick oh, you with. Oh, it's the bill of the forest. 
The bill of the forest. The bill of the oh, woods. Yes. The bill of the woods. Okay. I can work with a bill of the woods. Um, okay. All right. Um, we don't have much time. Time uh, me is a, and it looks as a, a very broken watch. It pulls from its its pouch. It's got a, a very large leather pouch hanging on on the side of it, attached to a, a belt that just it looks like a Barbie belt to be honest, because mm-hmm. it's such a tiny thing. Pulls out the broken watch. And goes time. Uh, five centuries past. Shattered glass. Oh, thank you. So... I think we need to pay them now. And put... Unscrews the the cream again. Uh, Or, Or even better, or even better, puts the cream away and gets out one of those little gold packets of butter. Like the little butter slab. Its eyes go wide. And starts unwrapping the little butter slab and hands it out to the hobgoblin. It ejects this long, sticky frog tongue and it wraps around your fingers, grabbing the butter from between them. You know. Taking the plastic container with it and it just eats the whole thing. Oh. Okay, yep. Mm. Very good. Right. Yeah, that one's a little chewy. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful day. Crunch uh, butter. Huh? Crunch butter. Yes. Crunch butter. Um, all right. Well, thank you for your What's time. What's a time? No, uh, no, not time. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to go to the hello now with the, the ears and the tail. And the tail. Oh. Hello. It, uh, it kind of looks back to where it was hiding. And it, it holds up one of the very three large lanky fingers. Oh. And it goes and scrambles back in there and pulls out a very large, smelly bag, another leather bag that looks kind of like the one that it has. And it, it shoves it your way. And this is kind of hilarious because this, this bag is about the same size as this goblin. So it's it's trying its best to, to bring you this smelly bag. Can we identify the smell? It smells like rotting fruit. 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 Okay, Yankee's eyes widen. Fruit. Perfect. Okay. I, I, I give a Jenny Stone to have the crunch butter. Courage, but... oh. Dunkey reaches into Sylvia's bag himself, <laughs> takes out the crunch butter and passes it to the goblin. It, it grabs as many as you will give it, and then it takes off back into the briars. Sylvia is just standing there for a moment with the smelly bag, looking to Junkie and looking to their bag as if well, just another day in the hedge and hands jung the bag of fruit. Jung-hee uh... reaches into the bag, knowing oh, full well what a Jenny Stone is. Uh, oh, oh boy. What is it? Uh, I don't know things! Do you, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you pull one out to show your friends? Of course, yes. <laughs> It looks like a molar that has been entirely taken over by a cavity, but plump and juicy. This is a a, a goblin fruit that I've written down here. 
It is smelly beyond belief. Uh huh. If they are not in a container, or if you are not wearing a uh, gas mask or some other form of uh, PPE, uh, <laughs> it's negative one to non reflexive actions. But it will give you, per Barry, one point of glamour back. So to swallow it, you have to roll your stamina. How many are in the bag? You find that the bag is strangely endless. Jeez, <laughs> face. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm starting to see what you mean by it's a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you if you seal the bag uh, the way that the goblin had it sealed, you, you won't have to take a negative to your reflexive actions. Yankee pulls out the molar. Pops it into his mouth. Oh, Jesus. Gives it a good crunch. Tries to keep it down. Smiling the whole time, like, yeah, it's good. But you can see it in his eyes. It's bad. Uh, it's so bad. I would like you to roll your stamina, please. <laughs> so bad. But I got two successes. You succeed in swallowing this uh, Jenny stone, and it is the most rank thing you have ever had. Um, it, it tastes like, have you ever gotten a Tylenol stuck on the back of your tongue and it melts oh. before you can swallow it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. That. Jung Hee does a hard swallow of the stone before giving everyone else a thumbs up and going, it's good. <laughs> Try some. <laughs> Do you choose to try some Jenny stones? I mean, just so you know, these facial expressions are all there. Looking at like, <laughs> looking at uh, uh, at Sylvia's stats, she's like, "All right." Mare, on the other hand, is like, Ooh. I, I would think, and so this is just my own headcanon, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I would think that uh, Sylvia, being a businesswoman, has had a lot of international meetings where different foods are served, so yeah. she could probably stomach this. We'll see mm -hmm. with the stamina roll. Well, and she's also, in her past life and her endurance, should have been familiar with just consuming odd things. So... Yeah, all right. Just yeah, like right. Ludfisk, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, let's open that in a car. Um, yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to eat the, the stone. And when you do, if you succeed on your stamina, you do get to replenish one glamour. Sweet. I'm down one glamour, so that would be great. All righty, so roll stamina. I'm just gonna do meat dice because I'm having a hard time like navigating. So it's gonna be a four dice roll. Not bad. Pool. Not bad pool. Yeah. Uh, Eolanka will take one. That is ah oh, good one. No successes. Oh god. I have a success. So, Sylvia, you managed to uh, swallow the Jenny Stone uh, somewhat difficultly. Uh, it is one of the nastier things you've had, and Iolanth, you, you feel that heavy feeling in the pit of your stomach, and your upper lips start sweating, and your hands start shaking. You are probably going to throw up. What do you do? Uh, stick my head in the hedge to hurl. Like the brambles and branches. The hedge parts from you uh, so that you do not 
throw up on it and you you have a moment to yourself uh when i come back i will uh i assume we brought some water in the squeaky treasure chest take a swig rinse mouth out i uh, thought there's cream oh that sounds like a real bad idea <laughs> Uh, that was unpleasant. Uh, and then... You hear... Thousands... Nah, I'll take it back. Hundreds of scurrying feet rampaging through the hedge. And your new little business partner will say comes screaming out from between some vines. Help, 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 hello, hello. Uh, help, there we go, goodbye. Help. It has angered its fellow hobgoblins by giving away so much Jenny fruit, Jenny stones to changelings for just a couple packets of butter. Oh no. Take it with you, adopt it as our child now. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was about to say, I was like, uh, will it be insulted if I scoop it up as we run away? <laughs> it it will not. It is it is definitely screaming for help, and these hobgoblins are pursuing it. How and many? All of you, you. Those hundreds, you said? Well, they're hundreds of feet, but uh, some if of you them have, have to give two, it a some have four. Oh. Some are as tall as four feet, some are as small as your little uh, friend who is about Polly Pocket size and a, a foot tall. Oh my gosh, I have plucked that one up and I've got it clutched up against me. Um, and Would then I immediately like... look to Jung Hee. <laughs> Jung Hee is that help? <laughs> reaching for the bourbon and is lighter. Just give it a you fire a warning shot first, okay? A warning shot. Warning shot. Oh. Yes. Oh. Right. Okay. Warning yeah. shot first. Now this is you're able to do something before we roll initiative. It depends on if they catch up or not before you do whatever it is you do. Uh, my plan was to do, you know dragon's breath with the bourbon as a trick for elemental weapon oh, so that I can create a weapon from the fire that comes out. I will allow you to do that before we roll initiative. Sylvia and Island. Oh, just are we rolling initiative now? No, no he's rolling to do his, oh, his uh, rolling dragon breath. Ah, ah. Yeah. Also, you know, you got endless Jenny stones to uh, attempt to swallow if you need to replenish Clayton. <laughs> um, I am just trying to remember exactly what some of these contracts do. Uh, are you looking at any in particular? I can help you find them. Uh, mostly a lot of it's just me going, what the heck are this? Um, because it's all like in different places, like you know, like there's the court contract, and the other ones. Uh, 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 uh. Ew. Okay, that doesn't do it. Um, I had one thing where it was like I could stare so I think it's the dragon nose. But I think that's only to one person. That wouldn't be to a whole group, right? I'm trying to find where that is. If you give it to me. Someone else go before me. Here we go. Oh wait, that doesn't help at all. Never mind. <laughs> and my PDF finally got to it. Oh, uh, 
Uh, is Paralyzing Presence a targeted sort of thing? Or I'd have to be like to one goblin? Yeah. Oh. Um. Alright, my job is to protect the baby. <laughs> you could target the largest one and see if it intimidates the others if you wanted to. Okay, I'll try that. But right now, I kind of have the little one. I have our friend. I never asked his name. I should have. Uh, it's fine. There will be time later. Yeah. Uh, Ilanth, is there anything you'd like to do before initiative is rolled? No, I really don't have any combat contracts, so... Same. Uh... The only thing... <laughs> Y'all run away. I'll I'll stay behind and fight the 100 goblins. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I have I lethal mean... mean. I have lethal mean in case they get too close to me. I can bite and scratch them. It is up to you entirely what you would like to do before initiative is rolled, but uh, Junghee, go ahead and give me that roll you wanted to do for your elements. Oh, you already did that, didn't you? It is a three successes. So Excellent. Junghee pulls a rapier out of the fire that he spews out and holds it, gets in a ready stance with his shield in the other arm. And with those bonus successes, adds range to this melee weapon and lowers the initiative penalty by one. Nice. So it's a 20 foot rapier. Yeah. Up Holy to 80 crap. feet maximum range. That's amazing. Your, your little friend looks at him and goes, Shady. Shady. I would probably take Trade the little time? friend. Huh? No, Trade not time. time. I have a very important job for you, okay? Listen hey. close. Hey. I'm going to put you in this bag. Hey. You cannot eat anything until we're done. <laughs> you promise? I promise uh, done eating. Eat later, not now. Okay? Eat later, not now. That, that is later? Later, not now. Very busy, okay? Later, crunchy butter. Yes, later cream. you get a crunchy butter and some cream. Yes. <clears throat> okay, now wait. And I put it into, like, the side pocket of the bag and, like, zip it closed, like the one that's got the <laughs> zipper. So I shove it in there and I zip it in. And at that time, I also am just like the claws and teeth are starting to like manifest and get scary. Like the eyes are kind of going stone and stark and just no one's going to touch the child. <laughs> She'll be the child. Yes, this is this is my baby Yoda. You have oh, given man. me a baby Yoda, and that is what I have now. Oh no, what have this I is, done? This is my son. So, please, my darling changelings, roll initiative. Uh, it should be... Uh, oh, that's weird. It showed you rolling zero dice, Rachel. I do like it. Uh, weird. Okay. Uh, so, initiative is what again? Please remind me. Uh, you actually have a, an initiative modifier at the bottom of your sheet. Oh, right, um, right, right. There. And so, you just roll. roll D10. Oh, is there an alternate? No, no, no. There yeah, is okay. There's a so... big blue button at the top of your sheet oh. called roll. But initiative. I haven't filled in anything on my sheet. Ooh, mayor, and that. You've got your PDF sheet. I have my PDF there. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I will Blue put in button. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. 
So Dex and composure, and then it's plus the modifier. You or no, roll that AD10 and add your dex and composure. It's the only time you ever roll one die and add things to the results. Oh, okay, that's, I knew there was a thing. Okay, so, oh god. Uh, that's a 10 plus 3, so that's a 13, fam. Beautiful. I got a 16. Time to go crunch. I am scrambling all your names here. I wrote he, Sylvia, and then I was writing Mare, which is not Mare, it's Rachel, but that's what I want. Oh, goodness gracious. Being in the head just fucking with me. Anyway. <laughs> the goblins. You are gonna shoot, you nerd. You roll. Oh, yes. Thank you for the boost. What does the boost do? Uh, it will allow you to roll three extra dice. Oh, lovely. Nice. All right. This is a seven. The hobgoblins go last as a collective because I don't want to roll 100 initiatives. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jung, you are first. All right. So there's. Can we see the 100 goblins? Some are emerging from the hedge. Uh, they are about social distance away from you. <laughs> They are social distance. <laughs> <laughs> social distance of goblins. Um, <laughs> and uh, they are filtering out. Like, some of them are, are four feet tall. Some of them are just, like, a foot, like your little friend. And they are steadily approaching their fast little buggers. would like to roll a strength weaponry attack at the ground for hedge spinning purposes. That is. I have light weapons at rank three, the merit, so I can sacrifice my defense for bonus dice. All right. Uh, before you do that, though, we are going to have to do a bit of an early break, my friends. Uh, and where is my... I, I apologize. For a moment, we must step away from our tail and replenish our glamour. We will return in ten minutes or ten years. Time has no master in your antiquity.
right, we are back. And Jung Hee is about to do an amazing kick ass move, I do believe. Indeed. All right. Jung Hee sees this horde of goblins approaching and coming out of the woodwork, takes his rapier and plunges it into the ground. The ground begins to shake around the entire area as a large divot forms in the earth, a large crevice right underneath the goblins, and an earthquake begins. Fire raining from the sky as it all occurs. Fire raining from, oh, oh god. Uh, I am going to actually roll for the hedge at this point, um, just to see how it reacts to all this fire. It, uh, did I read that right? Yeah, I did. So every time fire lands, uh, it parts and reseals after the fire goes down and sizzles out on the ground between the briars. It conveniently spreads open over top of a lot of hobgoblins and a lot of them sizzle. You start to smell barbecued chicken, but without the sauce. And it kind of makes you wonder if hobgoblins taste like chicken. But you don't have time for that as the earth begins to shake. Uh, as the ground opens up in a large crevice around the hobgoblins, and many of them are secluded on this island of land. They begin to evaluate this, this crack and try and bridge their way across, but they don't get to do that till it is their turn. Sylvia, it is your turn. Um, you said that the, uh, the goblins were about social distanced away from us, right? Yes. What? Just... Vaguely describe the one closest to me, if you would, just random, if that's possible. Is it a big one or a little one? It is a medium-sized one, about two and a half feet tall, and it has one full head and one partially developed head with one eyeball. And it is eyeing you. All of the eyes are eyeing you, and it is snarling and scraping at this edge of... To you guys, it's not that scary. It's about a five foot drop. But to them, it is this ginormous chasm of mm. which they cannot cross yet. All right. I would like to lunge towards it and try to grapple it with brawl, I believe. Like, isn't that its own thing? Like, grapple isn't its own thing in this one, it's just brawl. Right? Yes, it would be brawl and strength. Brawl and strength. Beautiful. Uh, and Are you using... trying... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are you trying to grapple it over the chasm or bring it to you from... Bringing it to me, like, yeah. in essence, I would like to kind of grab it by whatever it's got, and I'm going to hold it up and above me if this works out well. I'm planning on eating this guy as an <laughs> example to the others of who they're messing with. Um, and if I do brawl with intent to eat, um, which is my intention, uh, three successes is an exceptional success. Give me that roll. And I believe I have a boost from earlier. You do, so you get three extra dice. Yeah, lovely, good. Snack time. <laughs> Let's see, that's a total of... You get gobby so, nuggies. Gobby nuggies, finally. So hungry. Uh, so that's brawl, which is two, and strength, which is... That. So that's four dice plus three is seven. Okay. One, two, three, we have three successes. 
That is an exceptional success. Describe what it looks like for your um, eating habits. So the moment that Sylvia typically has this very like, um, you know, influencery put together, like could be photographed at any time sort of an appearance. And that all has changed from the moment she put her tiny child into her bag. And from that moment, it's as if like all of the normal, perfectly formed skin seems to crack away and there's stone underneath it with stone teeth that are snarling and like almost like the, the, the planes of her cheeks and brows are kind of sharpening as well. Her hands have turned into sharp, elongated fingernail talons as she grips this hobgoblin by the scruff of its neck and holds it above her. As she holds this thing above her, there's a vicious grin as it looks like it's startled, like what the heck is she gonna do? And it's like, this is the heck I'm gonna do. And her jaw begins to unhinge to being probably closer to like three feet in it like it covers like almost all the way down to her waist as her jaw just widens and she just drops the goblin in there snapping her jaw shut as she does so do you swallow it whole or do you chew uh i'm trying to remember i think there's a thing or one of them uh <laughs> i'd give it a good couple of chews kind of like just one of those things where it's like it like like the dragon chomp like where it's kind of like ah, ah, and then it chomps again like two or three big dragon chomps before she tries to swallow it picture been, this yeah. a giant gusher mm -hmm. that has bones and tastes like gator tail Yum. There's a that... whole bowl of them forming right here. <laughs> yes, Junki conveniently made you a bowl. It's earthenware, as a matter of fact. Earthenware bowl. Ugh. Ah, a delicacy. Yes. Mm. And then yes. the moment she does that, she looks back down to those that are falling in there and says, like, who's next? <laughs> Oh, let me see here. They are going to roll their resolve and composure, which is not very high. There is a group of about 20 who have seen this. About five of them decide that it's better off to jump into the chasm. <laughs> the rest take off back into the hedge. You still have an army of hobgoblins, but that's 20 down. Iolante, uh, Iolante, uh, what would you like to do? There is like literally nothing I have on my sheet for combat. Wow. Um, this was an oversight. Uh, I would like to hold my action. All right. Uh, I believe, though, you also have things on you, uh, given by Derja. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I will try brandishing the coffin nail. And how would you like to do that, exactly? Uh, just bring it out of the, the satchel. Wait. Huh. Okay. Different strategy. <laughs> I'm gonna open the squeaky treasure chest and throw some butter into the crowd. A butter. <laughs> Not all of it. Just Not all of it. it. Like He needs to keep some. I promised him some. Yeah, yeah. No, just like uh, a stick of the butter we have. Alright, so... Did, uh, Mayor, did Sylvia seal 
your little friend in completely like he can't even look out yeah i uh okay. i so you know like how they have inside of those bags they'll have the different compartments and then there's the one pocket there that you can like put something in and zip it in i have zipped him into there it's a styrofoam cooler though but i thought it still had the mechanics of the bag of my oh bag. that's right yeah oh that's right okay so i apologize my bad uh yes if you've sealed them in there completely you will hear no complaints from your little friend okay and uh these hobgoblins they see this butter and they begin to fight themselves over it Excellent. not all of them some of them are like ah pff, butter whatever uh but about 30 of them are scrambling over this butter clawing each other biting each other and there's something interesting i would like you all to roll perception wits plus composure uh Oh gosh, that's four. Yeah, four successes here too. Nice. Jimmy, how about success. you? Success. What was that? Just one success. You all notice that none of these hobgoblins have been using any magic so far. And they do have the capability to do so. They haven't been using anything that requires glamour. It is the Hobgoblin's turn. Mm -hmm. The four foot one stretches out its arms and just lays across the chasm. It does face plant into the dirt and a piece of its tooth chips off, but it seems to feel it's worth it as the smaller Hobgoblins that aren't fighting over butter, which is about 20 of them come flooding over this hobgoblin bridge. As they are flooding over their hobgoblin friend, because of the earth shaking, he falls down into the chasm and you hear just this sickening crunch. Yeah. Jung, it is your turn. Man. All right. I would like to charge at the biggest one that just crossed over the chasm. That one's about three and a Run half feet tall. Three and a half feet tall. Yep. Massive, worthy opponent, clearly. This was a fair fight, 100%. Uh, I'm going to, after all of this combat has happened, challenge that one to a duel right now as a loophole to Fae Cunning. You're going to challenge the hub? Challenge this one in particular to a duel. <laughs> Standing 10 feet away, yelling out, You! It's one on one combat. It snarls angrily at you, and you can hear it kind of choke on a, a loogie that it accidentally inhaled when it did so. <laughs> and you do, in fact, achieve fey cunning. Would you like to inform your motley mates of what this is? Uh, I keep my defense against firearms and surprise attacks. And when I dodge successfully, I may redirect attacks. Additionally, any mundane weapons that strike me get damaged by my stamina. So it's a lot of that someone breaks a chair over you and the chair breaks type of maneuvering. Or if hobgoblins try and scratch you, their claws break off. Or... <laughs> yeah. When someone tries to punch me, I bend out of the way and they punch someone else matrix yeah. this hobgoblin sneers at you 
I shot you. And it comes charging at you. Is that all you would like to do for your turn? Do you have any other moves? That is my action. Okay. Because it says it's reflexive. Oh, is it? Oh, lovely. I would like to dodge. All right. Go ahead and... uh... Well, actually, since that you have that, you don't really need to roll dodge, per se. Roll to see if I do dodge, which is an obscene dice pool for dodging. Okay. My defense. Go for it. But it's more just to see if I succeed, so I can redirect the attack. Yeah, that's five successes. I, I feel confident in that. You do successfully dive out of the way of this charging hobgoblin... And behind you, the hedge reaches out with writhing brambles and scoops up this hobgoblin, and the brambles start to constrict, and you hear a pop as everything inside is crushed. The hedge is sick of their shit. Or at least that one's anyway. Oh, wow. Sylvia, it is your turn. You said there's some who are still charging at us? Absolutely. Okie dokie. You scared off a a decent amount of them, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh. Second first, same as the first, I suppose. Just you're gonna keep coming here, and I'm hungry. Therefore, <laughs> roll to snack. Roll to snack. I would like to do a snack check, please. I want to <laughs> see what's on the menu. All right, let me go back. And so that's gonna be it was strength and brawl again. Yes. And then this time only the four. For me. Uh, but that's going to be two successes. All right. That is not exceptional, but this one puts up a struggle. You manage to just kind of stuff it down in your mouth. It does that thing in the cartoons where it puts the hands at the top of the mouth and the feet at the bottom of the mouth. It's like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, no. You should have backed off, I say, kind of like with my mouth. <laughs> like hanging open before trying to once again snap and crunch. You snap and crunch, and it is like the most delicious. Well, it depends on if you like Gator Kill or not. Snicker snack that you've had. Mm. This one had a hint of cranberry. It mm-hmm. had a little pocket full of uh, some some cranberry kind of like like made like fruit. made like a little roulade kind of deal going on. Yeah, there. like really like you know. Mm. Which Precisely. Like part of her brain is sort of thinking is like, ooh, maybe I should bring cranberries to the next event. Hmm. And then it's like in the back of her mind, thinking back to the real world. Um, are there any yeah, so that's that's the main part of that one then. <laughs> I'm right. gonna keep eating them if they're gonna keep coming here. I might scratch out a couple of them, but primarily Oh, that's right. Uh let me roll their uh Oh yeah, it's her not to stay. Yeah. Nap time. They only have two in resolve and one in composure, just so you know. Yeah, no. Uh the goblins as a horde have failed. Wow. Um I rolled no successes. So the rest of the hobgoblins take off and it is just thunderous as they go zooming through the brambles and what's left of their fallen comrades. The only ones that are still there are the ones fighting over the butter and they are very quickly dwindling themselves down. They're not even paying attention to you guys. If they finish off the butter, they might be a slight threat. So, Iolanth, what would you like to do? Oh no. 
Oh, okay. I thought you froze for a second. I heard Eidolon, and I'm like, who the hell is Eidolon? Eidolon, what would you like to do? Um, I'm not playing Wraith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was taking notes. I'm like, I, what, who's that character? I thought <laughs> he was playing Colin. Um, I mean, if they're dispersing, then I think the best thing to do is to run the opposite direction. Are the rest of you in agreement of zooming away? Jung he wants his butter back. So he'll just shout, you all go on ahead. I need my butter. And heads into the pile of goblins fighting. All right. Well, I'm not going to abandon Jung he yeah. so... <laughs> My fake cunning will carry me through. I have a defense of eight, and every time someone misses me, they hit someone else. Yeah, they're so... not going to touch him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, but like also, you're a motley maid, and so True. I'm not just going to run away while you're hiding. So uh, I will watch from a safe distance. That's fair. Uh, Sylvia, how about you? Are you also going to drop out of initiative, or...? Um, yeah, at that point, I'll drop out of initiative. I'll just kind of back off over towards Highlands and just kind of, like, dabbing at the corners of my mouth and stretching a little bit, kind of allowing for things to kind of morph and flex back to their normal perspective. Probably, like, just a little, like, mm, oh, excuse me. You may or may not burp up like a marble. It's fine. Yeah. Like, hmm. Hmm. And pockets it. <laughs> uh, Jung Hee, tell me how you would like to make quick work of the rest of these hobgoblins to get your butter. Jung he hops into the crowd, almost writhing through the pile of goblins like a snake as they try to hit him and he narrowly dodges each hit and they hit each other until there's only one goblin remaining. And young he takes that rapier and from like 10 feet away after jumping back, just lashes out with this sword made of fire and just impales the goblin like a shish kebab. Beautiful walks back over to the pile of butter that's been trampled like nobody's business scoops and it up and a little melted lifts it up triumphantly from the pit I got my butter <laughs> thank you Junghee come on we've got to get going climbs out of the pit leaving the sword behind you hear a couple goblins down in the, the large crevasse that you had created they're just they're just squabbling um trying to climb each other to get up and out but they can't they'll figure it out so is there anything that you would like to do before you continue on to find your friend colin so if all the goblins are either there or dead or run off that one little bush where our little friend uh, had his thing. I would like to unzip it and just look down at him and say, we're not coming back here for a while. Is there anything else you want to grab? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and kind of just shake the bag to get him out of there. No, hurry up. We don't have very long. So... I assume that there's a, a, an array of goblins, like, injured or, or dead, just laying around. Yes. Uh, I would like to just sort of examine them and see if there's anything that makes it obvious why they were not using glamour or magic. There is nothing obvious around... Um, you do find a bunch of, like, glamour-infused things. Mm -hmm. And 
if you kind of go to touch any of the little goblin bodies, using not a, a rolled kenning roll, but kind of just your your inner kenning, they have eliminated all of the glamour from themselves into the objects that they carried with them. Okay. Uh, Theolant will point this out like, huh, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Fonda, like, what, what do they know that I don't? Uh, Theolant will take a handful of these random items. Sure. You get a little bitty mechanical spring that's got about a point of glamour and each of these things is about a point mm -hmm. you find a compact mirror that when you open it it screams it has about a point in it you find a piece of sea glass uh you find a, a little tiny i don't know if you remember these from the the 80s and 90s but these little fuzz balls with two eyeballs and the giant feet and little antennas you found you find about three of those and uh, the adhesive is still on the feet. You can stick them anywhere. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to start carrying these with me because um, I don't know why the goblins are doing it, but there is obviously something weird going on in the hedge, so. If you do recall, and it's up to you whether or not your character does, uh, one of the things that was said about this entity that's destroying Arcadia is that it eats glamour. All right, so that would make make sense. Anything else you guys would like to do? All right, can you continue? That is all. I'm just waiting for my little friend to grab whatever he has and jump back into the bag. Your friend comes back wheeling a little Barbie cart full of what looks like junk. But it's his junk. It is his junk. You have like an empty spool. You have uh, a broken knitting needle. There's just, it's its literally just junk. A couple of these items are his glamour-infused things. Uh, the card is small enough. You could put it in your designer purse. Right, I will grab the little cart and put it down in there and put my hand out to see if he wants to get a, get a lift. He does what the bigger goblin did to help make a bridge. He just spreads out his arms and face palms into <laughs> your palm yeah and so i grab that and i stick him in the purse so that it's uh where he would be able to kind of perch and kind of look around as like as he's going for a ride with us okay. promise yeah yes uh promise and uh if young he is nearby i'm going to grab one of the crunchy butters even if it's a little smooshed, it's like, here, it, it's okay. I've got some more, but we've got to get moving now. That hinged jaw just opens and crunches. Uh, this this little crunchy butter has been melted by the heat from Jung Hee's rapier, so when he bites it, butter just <laughs> everywhere. Oh, God. And he oh. moves his little tongue to lick off his eye like a gecko. Hot buttered goblin, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> You joke, Jung Hee nods and goes and. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's a joke. Besides, anyway, we're, we've got to go find our hello still. Oh, hello. Yes. Yeah. And he'll point in the direction of your path. Perfect. Let's go. We enter back on Collins, previous keeper's residence. He's been searching tirelessly. Colin, what is the very last place you'd look for your keeper? Like, 
the last place within the residence or like the last place I'd ever think to look? The last place you'd ever think to look? Uh, probably a changeling freehold. <laughs> like, I mean, or like, on, on his property. Uh, okay, on his property. Um, uh, where on his property? I think there is like a room that is essentially like the laundry room. <laughs> Probably the last place that would, yeah. That's like where like it's like a like a essentially like a maid's quarters kind of a thing. So like the laundry is there, the dishwashing is there, uh, you know. Where the whores go. Where 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 where, where the live-in staffs, less lesser gentry or changelings would take care of things. That he just had no like desire to deal with, probably. You go there, and there's a lot of things that look as if they were left half finished. He has the capability to have things from the mortal realm that work with glamour, like washers and dryers. He's been there before he's collected changelings from there before he's seen but he prefers it done the old-fashioned way you know a good old hand washing is just if it doesn't make the changelings fingers blister and bleed it's just not properly clean oh but don't bleed on his clothing that is the finest caterpillar silk you will ever come across and it is dyed with the brightest purple you will ever see, made from pixie blood. There's things left in the wash. There's blood on the floor, but not much. More than anything, there's dust. Lots of thick dust. Uh, I think Colin leans down and just licks the blood to try and get a better sense of it and understand what it is, where it came from, whose it is, what it is. You taste this blood, and I would like you to roll your investigation plus... Hmm. We're actually going to go with... Resolve here. Dear Bree. Um, <laughs> would you say this is is a is this a form of like percepting or uh yes. Is, yeah, because it's like to dice to perception rolls and rolls to identify or recall details. So I get to add my weird to that. Well, this would be a bit different. I will allow you to add your weird. Um, this will be a bit different because you haven't exactly tasted everyone's blood in your keeper's property. At least not anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Once upon a time, I knew all of their blood. Nine successes. Oh, wait, sorry, ten. Oh, awesome. This tastes like the finest plum wine you have ever had. It smells, though it is congealing, it smells like crushed berries. And when you taste it, you swear that you can hear a light breeze on a beach side. Mm. This was your friend. This was someone that you had met before, who stayed behind after you had gone. Her name was Philomena. And she seems to have met an untimely demise as you 
taste this blood. You're looking around, and with all those successes, underneath this mass pile of dust are hollowed bones. Brittle, broken. It's hard to find any whole bone here. I think there's just this very loud, mournful howl uh, that he can't help that just comes from Colin as he takes this plum blood and knows that uh, Philomena is no more, but he knows he must press on. And none of this smells of his former keeper, of what he must check, what he must do, what's ingrained in him. And I think he checks each of these piles of bones for any remnants, any clues, Anything that will help him track and lead him to where he must go. You actually hear something coming from behind one of the solid wood doors in this washroom. Uh, I immediately go to it and tug it open. It's a passageway. One that's kind of made for the servants to go around unseen and collect dirty laundry or other things that need taken care of. Would you like to go in it? Of course. All right. You head down. These are earthen steps carved out very carefully, very meticulously. And the smell of an earth covered in spring rain overtakes you as you step down. Your footfalls are soft because you are hound and very stealthy, but also because it is almost as if this earth is alive beneath you. After all, it's a dwelling in Arcadia. They twist and they wind and you feel almost as if these steps don't remember you. You may not have been down here, but the house should remember who you are. Unless your keeper has notified the house that you don't belong. Oof. It's just a, a gut punch. I would like if you could roll your weird as a dice pool for me. Okay. One success. For a while, your path is obscured from you. There are steps that lead to nowhere. There are steps that lead to a random chasm that drops out for what seems like an unknown amount of distance. You can't see the bottom. You work your way back and forth through these winding staircases. And at one point, you put your hands on the walls of these staircases because it is raised roof but it does have walls so you can't see to the left or right of you it's open it doesn't feel enclosed if you could speak to this dwelling what would you tell it in order to find your keeper I think Colin is just slightly frustrated. He's not used to not completing a task with ease. And he, you know, lays his forehead upon it and and just lips pressed and whispers, just barely audible, that 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 he is here to protect, and though he may stray in this way, he cannot let harm come upon those that he has sworn oaths to. Um, while he must do what is best for him, he cannot let go such ties that bind. And that he must find and protect his master in such dire straits. And what would you offer the earth around you in exchange for making your way straight? Anything it wanted. 
It's a house. It, uh, doesn't really ask for anything in particular, but it needs a show of good faith. Uh, I think that Colin, uh, ooh, how mm -hmm. <laughs> Scale of zero to ten, how morbid are we allowed to go? Uh, with the consent of all the other yeah. players? I will allow 10. Um, uh, people with things. K and Got no there. lines here. Cool. So uh, I think Colin takes uh, a hand and the fingers become these claws as he reaches down to his feet and pulls off one of uh, the boots that are there and just cuts off his pinky toe. Um, and offers a part of his body and then slips and as it's still bleeding he just slips the boot back on you see earthen fingers reach up they're delicate like a ballerina's hands and it delicately grasps this toe and pulls it back into the earth with just a flourish of the wrist. The dirt before you becomes a red carpet. And when the stairs branch off, it shows you exactly where to go. And through pain, through anything, it's as if he feels none of it. He gives relentless chase and runs. All right, you make it down to a cellar full of large wine casks. It seems like no one is there, but you see a trail of dried blood and a piece of ripped fabric. It looks like fine purple silk. And I just follow and I just go and there's these, these soft, keening, whimpering noises. The idea that, that this is, is harm. A shadowy figure emerges from behind one of the farthest wine casks. And there's about 30 in there. These giant barrels full of just wine. There's summer wines, there's winter wines, uh, there's your master's favorite peach wine from his very own trees that are now decimated on the property. And this figure looms and seems to grow. Then it cocks its head. He shrinks back down. My hound, my pet, you came. And despite being like rather tall, like probably like high six feet, um, he sort of shrinks in on himself and almost shrinks in stature as he, as Colin sort of looks upon this bay. I heard tale of gentry in Freehold's flown. That so I, are, are you all right? Are, are you all right? I saw blood. He will shoulder his cloak aside. And you can see half of his hand is missing. You can see the bone within and it's beginning to hollow out. And around the edges of the wound are black and slowly becoming dust on the ground. This wound isn't very fast, but it is slowly growing. Whatever did this 
possibly does permanent damage that is progressive. And I think like he sort of takes a few steps closer and it's just like very gentle, like clearly non-threatening, but there's a, a whine at the top of his throat and tears in his eyes. I, I should have been here faster. He'll get this glint in his eyes and he'll reach and put two fingers under your chin and lift your face up to his. Yes, but you ran. You fled this household. And he tries, like, his, his, like despite like the lift to his chin, his eyes duck into corners there. His, he's, Colin's trying not to meet his gaze and he's pit in his stomach and he's like, I do not belong to you or this house anymore. And yet, you come running back like a loyal dog. I didn't, just because I am, and he's tripping over his words, I am not, yours does not mean I want you to befall harm. He thinks for a moment. And then his eyes raise up to the roof of the cellar. Did you bring friends to finish me off? No, no, ne never. And his eyes sort of, they never, I would I would never, I, I said I do not wish harm upon you. I wish, I, I, I need, I, I, I need you to be fine and to be safe. I, I, I thought I could escort you um, somewhere else or get you where you, you could be safe. Um, I didn't, I should have, I should have. And like, there's like a moment where like, he's actually now taking a moment to process kind of what he's done. And the fact that, <laughs> oh yeah, I fucking just ran here and did all this and I just moved to the edge and I'm in Arcadia. My motley, I should have called my, I didn't call, I should have called my motley, they they will be cross. Now, remind me what it is he has on his hand that you've been looking for this whole time, and please describe it to your motley mates. So, um, one of the special things about my keeper is that, um, his left hand thumb is a whistle. A dog whistle. Yes. A bright silver, well polished, and it branches from flesh to metal and can be bent as flesh. But when he blows into it, plays a sound that summons all of the hounds in his possession and some outside of it. He will place this thumb against your lips. If you brought them to kill me, you will regret it with your life. I didn't. I wouldn't. I, they're not even here. They're they're back. They're back in the human, the mortal realm. That's where I left them. That's where they are safe. That's where they should be. It's it's not safe in Arcadia. It's not safe for you either, right now. Smell the air, he says to you and pulls the whistle away. 
You can, in fact, smell your friends, Ilanth, Sylvia, and Jung Hee. They have arrived he, to your keeper's property. And he does that thing that dogs do where, like, their just head, like, tilts. Just the puppy head tilt, like, mm -hmm. um, as he, like, sort of adjusts his hearing for different sound vibrations against the smells. And, and he'd been so focused on that singular smell he'd been tracking that he'd shut everyone else's out. And he's so surprised um, to find that that summer sunshine of Jung Hee is there and this sort of chill, cold, but still like copper scented of Sylvia and the sort of this reassuring autumn leaf that he associates with her own tree is, is there. And I don't know why they're, they may have, come for me but I, I didn't bring them and they're not I won't I won't let them harm you um, I don't I won't let anyone harm you that's not why I'm here we it was just, they, they can help we can take you out of Arcadia out of here where it is no longer safe we can we can there there are healers we can get them to attend to your hand I have no desire to leave Arcadia and his voice begins to raise at you and when it does it sounds like a storm rolling in over the ocean this is my home I own it as I owned all the changelings within they're all gone though they're all dead. Philomena's dead. He'll kind of raise an eyebrow. They have names. We have names. And then his face will soften a bit, and he'll just caress with the back of his hand down the side of your face. Oh, yes, you have a name. Colin, my hound, my loyal hunter. He the rest. Oh, sorry. Up. Oh, no, he just freezes up. Like, oh. I would like the other members of your motley to roll either survival or investigation to try and get your way to your friend Colin. Thank God uh, I have a that? Oh, my bad. Um, do wits for that one, because you're thinking on your feet. Okay, so that's where I'm good. I would like to make this failure dramatic. Oh, oh shit! Get that beat. You that better get that beat. beat. No, there are no beats in this. Oh, there yes. aren't. But uh, I will allow you to. <laughs> so there, it's only a three shot. There's no point in getting uh. beats. Um, however, you can turn it either into a lost point of glamour or uh, regain a point of glamour or a point of willpower. Or uh, heal your clarity, one of your clarities. Because uh, Jung Hee has uh, injured clarity from that. He sent a changeling. No, he sent a true fae out into the humans. I had one success. Uh, Jung Hee. Yeah, four. Uh, oh, I nice. have a specialization in urban investigation, it lies. I'm thinking, because it's, it's Arcadia. Yeah, it's fine if it doesn't. But it is it is a household. I'll allow it. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> House rules! <laughs> so... No! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that really got me. Um, I'm going to have the house roll. 
um, and throw dice. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to have it use manipulation and presence. Is spicy has it uh it only made one success um iolon you notice that the house is trying to throw up walls they're easily crumbleable they're made out of earth and flower petals and leaves very fresh bright spring items um you just take one finger and you push against that wall and it just crumbles. Sylvia, you see Eilant doing this and you kind of eh, it doesn't budge. And so you take both your hands and and it just collapses down to the ground. Jung He doesn't see any of this going on. He was turned around making sure your backs were covered. He was doing a really good motley mate job. He was trying his best. He's doing his best. Unfortunately, very quietly, when he wasn't paying attention, the house slipped up one of these walls. He turns around to find where you two have went. Have went. Have gone. <laughs> and he just sees a wall. Guys? <laughs> Guys? Uh, what we what do we see? Do we, do we notice that we've been separated? Uh, you do notice that you have been separated, but because of his dramatic failure, you don't know at what point you got separated. But you do yeah. have one up on it. You know that the house is doing it and can create walls spontaneously. Did we hear him with his guys, guys? You heard a very faint yes. Okay. Also, I apologize. Uh, Spank my Betty has given a summon the Elder Gods. That was my um, note from earlier, by De the way. Devin, <laughs> Devin also summoned them a while ago. He yeah, said there was the Hobgoblin army. I literally did oh, not okay. have that planned. So uh, you can thank Devin Thanks, for the Hobgoblins. And then I had a forbidden tome because Big Dad is bitter oh, about the change of me being able to sing. <laughs> <laughs> was this this? <laughs> this was earlier. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, study the forbidden tome. What is that one? Here? And that is a bad thing happens to me because Big Dad's being Big Dad right now. Yeah, Ben. I love you, Ben. Sounds like a big baby to me. <gasps> All right, are you yes. ready? Are you ready for this? Yes. I have one thing. You look at Sylvia to try and figure out what to do about Jung Hee, and you did hear the tiny guys. The house ground opens up. Oh God! <laughs> and becomes a slide, and Sylvia goes right down it, <laughs> and then it Maybe. shuts itself off. All three of you are now separated in this house, looking for poor Colin, who is with his keeper. But I have my hobgoblin son, so we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. At least that. you have each other. At least we have each other. Cranky daughter. <laughs> you hear the hobgoblin as it goes down. It feels that you know gravity is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and does it, it is yes yes it does in my bag it's it's fine it's just butter curdled and cream butter and cream. and cream in my designer bag okay. in your in your maxi hobo bottega veneta that is discontinued oh. was that english like <laughs> yes that was bag she's no, <laughs> I, I a speak, spoken bag I, I speak designer. It's one of yes. my languages. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's on her character sheet. Uh, clearly, yeah, that is an Arcadian language that I am not familiar with. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I'll on through with you being the last one in this room. What would you like to do? Uh, so Iolanth is going to use a skill that she learned playing video games. Uh, she's going to put her right hand on the wall and just start walking, tracing, like, the whole layout by keeping her hand on, like, the wall or the door or whatever. But, like, this is a really good way to cover the layout of, like, a video game map, and so that's what she's gonna do. All right, you do that. Um, I will say that since you you maintain those successes, you keep it throughout the house, uh, and you manage to basically figure out every single room. And the last one you come to is the washroom. Sylvia, you are going down this uh, seemingly endless slide, uh. and. You feel like the house is being a little cynical and it makes a bump in the slide. So you like slam your butt when you land back on the slide. It hurts. Um, you probably bruised your coccyx. But you finally skid to an end as you've been sliding on dirt. Um, you are made of stone, so at least your nails are polished now that Yay. they've... Um... Hey. <laughs> and it is dark. There is no light in here. It's open. Uh, it's a very open area because you can call out and it echoes. But you can't see a damn thing. I open the bag. I make the Ugh, smell uh, sound as I smell the nastiness that is down in there. It's like, sorry. It's, it's okay. The cream went goodbye. Yeah, I saw it go goodbye. That's okay. Do you have anything yeah. glowy? Shiny? Glow. 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 Bright light? Bright light. Bright light. It, uh, takes this, this bulb thing stabs it onto a stick spits on it rubs it a bit and holds it up it is a lightning bug behind that he infused with glamour to shine very brightly it looks like you're holding up a very small match stick but to him it's this 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 big torch it looks like a torch to him yes right <laughs> Right. Good job. I would, like, unzip part of the thing and see if there was any other cream or anything and be like, get out of town. Just, can you, do you clean? Clean? Uh, we clean. Clean. Mess, make clean. It needs to vomit, doesn't it? The dog. I wasn't gonna say that, but sure. That's what it does. It just just licks it up. <laughs> Sorry, <Clean>. folks. <laughs> so uh yeah, so I, I, I uh Sylvia takes the bright light and uh pinched between these two fingers to try to see what's going on in her surroundings. You see faces in the dirt. Some look like they're dogs barking. Some look like they're sobbing. Some, I apologize. Uh, but yours come to home. <laughs> but yes, like I would take a moment while that's happening, and you know, checking around, looking at the surroundings, but also kind of glowing back down in there to make sure that it's getting cleaned in, but. Sylvia is still significantly grossed out by Hop Goblin Puke and her designer bag. Because that's how is she going to explain this to the specialist that she has on hand for repairing her designer bags? Literally your chihuahua. Yeah. yeah I suppose. I guess that means I need to get a chihuahua. Dress <sighs> him up like fun. Oh my god, wait! I dressed the hobgoblin up 
You just like how I went up like a chihuahua. Or give it, it was like, like a like, it's like Lilo and a, Stitch. It's a dog. A you can get a mask for it. It's a dog. It's an ugly dog. It's an ugly dog. Don't talk about my dog like that. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, uh, the, it, it cleans up the mess that it made, and you're looking, and there's, some of the faces are just twisted in agony, their mouths hanging open, like they're stuck in a scream. You put your hand on one of those faces. Please roll your weird as a pool. Thank you, Jen. Uh, two successes. You can feel the house communicating with you in a way. These are its representation of those who were killed in this house. Mm. You could feel the not agony of being killed in the way that they were but you can feel the house's agony of having to watch as all of its children in a sense were decimated and there was nothing that it could do you even managed to gather that this house isn't even operating on its full power it's using what reserves it has left of glamour to keep the remaining inhabitants safe. Sylvia would have a moment where she's looking at that, feeling the house feels and just goes, I'm so sorry. And then sensing that this is like uh, initially wants to follow to where the remaining glamour is, hopefully that that's uh, Colin, but still has a moment of just there and is like, the one who did this, is it still here? You get what feels like a no. That it has gone it's and after gone. it escapes, well not escapes, after it leaves the property, the house no longer has track. But it can show you the direction in which this thing went. Yes, I would like that. And then, uh, I guess, if it's working off of mental images, uh, Sylvia would try to push forward a mental image of, Cal of Colin. You get kind of this little surge of light in your mind's eye. Uh, it's uh, pink and has edges like a flower petal. It just kind of flares for a minute, and you know that this means, yes, that this house knows exactly where Colin is. Okay. And just, can you lead me there and my friends there as well? We're looking, like, just kind of and pushing forward the idea of we're friendly towards Colin, you know, just we're, we're concerned. We've been worried about Colin. What would you have to offer the house in order to be able to bring everyone together. Does it like butter and cream? <laughs> it might. You can give it a shot and see what happens. Didn't you also have a bowl of sugar? Oh yeah, sugar. And you had honey as well. And honey. Yeah. So I'm gonna look down once again in the bag with my little light. So like, okay, trust me on this. And I start to grab the packets of sugar out. And I start to grab the um honey a little tub of honey and then i'm going for a crunchy butter oh no it's my give yeah, my butter give me butter and it's got its claws in it and and you kind of lift the butter and it's dangling inside of your okay, purse I, I need this just just this one you can have some of the others but i need this one <laughs> okay, thank you sugar yes you can and gives him a sugar packet and takes the others to it try to the offer whole sugar packet. No, you gotta to... crunchy sugar. Oh gosh. Okay. 
okay. Uh, takes that, and so, uh, Sylvia would then, with, you know, like, as trying to, like, probably would actually take the little the light, the bright light, and, like, stick it in her mouth, like a little cigarette kind of deal. Just stick it there and start to put everything together, uh, and offer to the house. It's like, this is what I came with. And this is an offer. Much in the way that it, it did for Colin, a path opens up for you, and the carpet is a gold and white marble. Like stone, but it's soft. And there are lights that look like sugar cubes glistening in the entire hall. Um, and this path opens up as well for Iolant and Jung Hee. Do you two decide to follow? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <Jung -hee. laughs> I was like, uh... <laughs> He's debating because it might be a trick. You never know. I'm tempted. To... Okay, so as this is all going on, Jung Hee sits down and decides to meditate and do yoga as part of the vigilance of Aries and maybe a hedge spinning thing like my mind is clear the way will be open to me and in the middle of him failing this <laughs> this happens and he's like ah yes of course I love him so then he gets up and marches on in fail your dad this, this is Mr. Magoo this is Mr. Magoo I love it. Uh, oh my god. Uh, okay. So, Jung Hee is walking this path. He doesn't get the uh, the the glittery light sugar cubes that uh, that Sylvia in Ilan got because this house is like oh, okay. No, you didn't. You didn't make. It. You have to walk in the dark. Now. Oh my gosh. You three converge in the washroom. What do you do? Um, so, upon seeing the other two, at least, Sylvia's just like, ah, there you are. And probably has a moment still of like rubbing her lower back from where she went down the, the slide. Island. Did you go for a ride as well, or? Uh, no, I just put my hand on the wall and walked, and now I'm here. Oh, oh, oh that's nice. And the uh, 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 so must have been watching too good because I lost you guys while focusing on potential threats, and I did some yoga, and the way became clear to me. So now I'm here. So, uh, Eolant would like to investigate this room, see if there are any sort of uh, clues, if maybe Colin left a trail while, while leaving. Absolutely. Three successes. Your friend was not hiding his tracks, as he does have the capability to do. You can see... This puppy energy, which is excitement and happiness and curiosity, which in a situation that's not dire is kind of the normal for Colin, aside from feeling a little forlorn and like he doesn't quite know how to operate in this world just yet. This world being the human realm. However, here in Arcadia, he walks with a bit more of confidence, it seems. You notice it starts to waver as you follow his little footfalls. Not little, he's big right now. As you follow his footfalls down these cellar stairs. And this is the point at which the marble and the gold carpet slowly gives way to red. And you can see the carpet is not only 
blood red, but it's shaped like droplets, large enough to walk on. Would anyone like to try and roll a weird to see what happened here? Yes. All right, give me your weird as a dice pool, please. Okay, let me um, click some stuff. Gonna click that. There we go. One success. Two successes. On one die. I'm very happy. That is impressive. Well done. <laughs> Especially yeah. since these rolls have not been kind to you. Three. Beautiful. You all kind of see movement to your right. And the dirt wall of this stairway begins to morph out a story of Colin speaking with the house and then offering a sacrifice to get to where he needs to go. That is the reason for the blood red carpet that is now beneath your feet. Can we tell where we might be now? Absolutely. Uh, the house kind of makes a motion of feet walking on this path that it has laid before you. You make your way down to the wine cellar where you hear this large booming voice and Colin's voice in response. Do you wish to approach kind of stealthily or not so stealthily? Um, does Colin sound like he's like in pain or in danger? What say you, Colin? Um, I don't think there's any pain or danger, but there's like, there's a, an edged weakness and softness that you've seen before with him around like really authoritative figures or like when Zheng He is like very much in their commander role and they sort of take over in a sense. Um, and when there's very large presence, he tends to sort of shrink and listen. He's, he's very much a follower in those kinds of ways. And, and, and I can... think uh, we'll take it stealthy. All right, please each one of you roll stealth to stay hidden. Stealth and... Uh... That's not a sheet, that's roll 20. Stealth and... Yeah. Presence. I'm gonna go with presence to see if they can actually subdue themselves from that house. Subdue their presence. Yeah, that's Two successes. The mouse, it says the things and it doesn't mean the things, one, but it says things. One success. <laughs> because I had no one stealth, but I did have presence. <laughs> all right, you all managed to stay stealthy. Uh, you managed to get about four wine barrels away it's still dark enough in that area you can kind of wedge yourselves between them colin won't you stay with me help me rebuild you are the last one that i have close to me And it's just, he can't even speak to say it aloud, but he just like does like this very soft, like, no. Like just his head, just move softly. No speaking. Um, it's as if he can't actually get himself to say the words, but wishes to give the no response. No, not even for a small amount of time. And as he's speaking to you, he's kind of running his fingers through your hair. 
and you start to feel a coldness around your neck and you hear the light tinkling of a chain. I, I, I could for just stay for, for a small bit to get you somewhere safe to, to bring you somewhere safe but I can't I'm, I'm not yours oh I beg to differ do you look to see what is making that sound and feel why your neck is so cold I think he like reaches a shaking hand like clawed tips up but can't both knows better than to, but also can't help to not break eye contact. But he'll reach a, a sort of trembling hand up to feel it. You see your keeper get a slight grin on his face, and his eyes are just this deep gray like the ocean during a storm, and his lips are the colors of blossoms. You notice the touch of leather at your neck with intricate leaf carvings etched into the leather and a chain connecting your collar to his wrist. And I think Colin's knees just give out. Yeah. He give out and falls down onto his knees. Please, no. I came back to help. Let me, let me help, but don't. Not, I'm, I'm not. You're helping me very, very much right now. You're giving me so much. Replacing everything that I've lost, don't you see? I, yeah, I don't know if there's a, I, I, I'm like a composure roller, or a resolve <laughs> roll. This is, uh, oh boy, this is dangerous territory. Yes, please make a um, composure plus uh, let's go with composure plus resolve. We're going to have a bit of the mental and spiritual. Oh boy. Um, mm. <laughs> No successes. Oh god. Okay. So you crumple to your knees and his voice floods over you and you just shut your eyes because it's like listening to your most favorite sound in the whole wide world shivers going down your spine and pooling in the pit of your stomach. Butterflies dancing inside of you. Please describe to your motley mates what your keeper looks like to you. Uh, so to Colin, it's like a distinguished gentleman, uh, ethereally beautiful, but aged and wizened. Uh, I said this to Ambrose who we were making the character, but the Percival Gray's character from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, sort of a look, but maybe like slightly buffer, um, and they they wear and they're they're clearly in just like these huntsman uh, leathers, uh, but are shrouded with the, like purple silks robing on top of this. There's this opulence, but also this sort of suaveness, but but also like a strength, and a sort of um, this sort of very masculine, uh, domineering kind of energy that that like sort of like I'm gonna arm wrestle you and just clock you down kind of a thing but it's almost like it's velveteen-coated. 
the ears are a little um a little perked and tipped still and he's got this um wolf this whistle for his gum but otherwise his hands are manicured but they're also calloused like while he presents a pristine front this man has done the work and has worked and done severe things and is capable and that is what he looks like to call in. And you can kind of see that, the rest of you. But because you're able to see him without this appeal that Colin does, you see very pointed cheekbones. You see, instead of hair, there are leaves sprouting from under his scalp. You can see that his shoulders are pointed and his ears are jagged. When he grins, you can feel spring, but not the part of spring that is green and budding. You feel the part of spring that winter has yet to relinquish, that ice, that danger that can kill new seedlings that is what you see and feel because you are not beholden to this keeper he pulls this chain to him pulls Colin closer and his head snaps to the three of you. Did you like our little show? You're next. Alas, dear lost lings, with one last look towards your fate and the blame towards spank my betty we now leave our players within the wonder and the weird that is the land beyond the hedge and scrape the enchantment from our eyes if this shared dream was not enough for you please follow vorpal tales on social media to discover your next awesome adventure or terrifying tale you can also find us at the portal of warfeltales.com for calendars, retellings, and more. Premonitions can be obtained at our Patreon for those who cast a contract into the weird. My changelings, it has been truly a pleasure to weave this story with you. Please remind the dreamers of the lost of your titles and with which doorway they can reach you in the hedge, starting with K. Hi, so I'm Kay, and uh, tonight I was our spring beast bearskin, Colin, who's gotten himself and is probably into a lot of trouble right now. Uh, you can find me at Puppet of One Two Three Nine Eight on Twitter, and currently you can catch me on Saturdays on this very channel from 3 p.m. where some SCP shenanigans are about to get a real, real shenanigan. Uh, we're about to deal with some uh, some mer people, and there's some great ideas about aphrodisiacs running around and pheromones. So that'll grow great. Uh, and yeah, lots of other little projects in the works. You can also catch me up if you check on the archives of Caring Cooper Studio, Onyx Path, Anna Gaming, playing in Monster Hearts, Changeling, and several other just fun games. And that's, uh, that's it for right now. Hello, I've been Jung Hee, our summer courtier. I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And you can find me tomorrow in our Masks of Nyanyanyanya campaign, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, on Sunday, running a D&D campaign of Plain Gia, which is still in Kickstarter. So give that a Google. Uh, on Monday for the finale of Delta Green, and on Tuesday for the finale of Black Void. And hello there, my name is Mary. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Oh Hello Mare. Tonight I have been Sylvia, your winter court Ferris bristle grinder. I got to eat people, that was very exciting. Um, I also have a son now, that's very exciting. 
Um, the next time that you can see me online, well, the next time you can see me on this channel will be tomorrow in Masks of Nya Nya Nya, uh, playing everyone's favorite newsy. And then you will see me on my channel uh, on Saturdays and Sundays at somewhere between 9 and 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, having some chill coffee chat time, playing some good vibes games and just hanging. So yeah, come check it out. Hello, my name is Rachel. I have been the kithless darkling eel alum. Uh, now I am stolen fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. And you can find me, uh, like uh, Marion P said, I will be running Masks of Nyarlath Hotep tomorrow. They may or may not be boarding the Titanic. It's 1925, what's the Titanic doing here? Oh, I don't know, right. let's find out. Uh, and then you can see me here also uh, Sundays for Cult and Mondays for the wrap up of Mythos World. We're gonna go kill Oppenheimer, that should also be a lot of fun. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to be playing some D&D over Plastic Age Plays. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. You can find me on the internet as Am Changeling, because me, Am Changeling, for no reason in particular. Um, but anyway, for those who stay for the last drops of glamour, let us know which changeling deserves a gift of fate from you. Your bestowment counts as a replenished glamour, hopefully to be used before their fate is sealed. Dear lost ones on this side of the hedge, you may now gift your fellow changelings with a similar boon, starting with Kay. Oh, goodness. Um, I think I, I have to give it to Sylvia. Uh, just all the interactions with our tiny new goblin and the absolute munch crunch of the other goblins is just several several layers of delightful i really enjoyed that all those interactions are great crunchy butter my vote has to go to colin just the whole time it pulled at my heartstrings mine also has to go to colin just every single step along the way i was just like oh and i did not realize how much of a motherly figure Sylvia was tonight until the reaction to both Colin and the Hobgoblin were the same. So, <laughs> business mom. Uh, I, I agree. That was like a really beautiful, uh, like the way that you just sort of dive into the themes of Changeling. It's really great. Um, but I'm, I'm going to give my vote to Key just because of the way you fight and just throw yourself into the fighting. That was really fun to watch. That was amazing, everybody. Uh, next week, join us for the possible finale, the part three. I have been told that if it happens to run over because the complications of the first session, you might. It'll, we'll, we'll see. I do like the number three, though, so, eh. Uh, anyhow. May the huntsmen never sound their horn for you, dear ones, and may you never starve for glamour. Good night. Are we still here? Yes. Uh, Hello. Long, long story, but uh, go ahead and kill Kims and kill Mike's, and uh, okay. next producer will handle it.